Our academic and applied esports program provides our competitive gamers a national stage to compete with other Division I universities. Our academic objective allows us to use esports to foster innovative interdisciplinary connections. Esports right now is an ever-expanding career field and having the opportunity to showcase its many facets through education is really inspiring. Villanova, we believe in community and in ourselves. We create, adapt, discover. And when confronted by uncertainty, we don't stand idly by. We never have. We get involved, lead by example, even when things are tough, especially when things are tough. We take action because Villanovans are like that, stronger together. Ignite change. Go Nova. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and family beyond the binary, hello and welcome to another Overwatch EGF Collegiate Broadcast. We are here in Season 3, Week 9. My name is Warren Jungle God Hammond, and I'm joined tonight on the mic by Worstcast. How are you doing today, my friend? Very good, very, um, very happy to be here, getting to cast some Collegiate Overwatch. Always a grand, grand old time, starting back up. Um, college back in session for everyone, including me. Um, so... Nice to get some less stressful form of college uh, in. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Less stressful for us, but I don't know if that's going to be the case for these two teams. They're both going to be looking to improve their record. We've got William and Mary uh, at a 6-2 and two record of going up against Villanova, who unfortunately has not found a win yet this season. So they're going to be looking to reverse their fortunes tonight, but they've got a really tough opponent in William and Mary. Yeah, um, William and Mary have... Um, Brought in some new players, some new roles for their team. They have a new team captain that's kind of trying to help them out uh, in terms of emotionally. Uh, it is very important in a team environment. Um, competing on a lot of teams. And if you don't have someone in the team that can kind of like rally people around them, it can get very tough. So now that they have that along with just good players. I mean, Nuke Lama has been, um, in tier, like, has been in tier three before. Very high accolade for Overwatch in general. Um, mm -hmm. So that team's very very strong so just hope they have fun out there yeah as do i uh we're gonna be starting things off today on nepal and from the looks of it we will be going to village first this map in particular or rather this sub map very very brawl um favored in my personal opinion you can run brawl on this map um it's kind of been because overwatch has been in a kind of a state for the last two years very minimal balance changes it's kind of been a lot of time it's given a lot of time to the higher level community to kind of figure out what is strong and what mm -hmm. and what can do what and on this map it used to be very brawl centric but in given enough time it's kind of devolved at this point where if you're running brawl on this point it can be very difficult in the ball compositions with pharaohs with echoes that kind of stuff uh doesn't look like it's going to come out from either side um but that is definitely something that has kind of shifted in this map a lot more pharaoh coming out in, in recent memory that is very true we have seen a shift over to the more dive compositions either on on these more brawl centric maps william and mary gotta be getting to point first uh to see if villanova instead decided to um go to the high ground here um right now william and mary just uh looking peaceful on point wait did they mess up the wall i think they messed up the wall so looked like they were trying to wall top left now they're kind of just split around so the wall top left doesn't work out that's gonna get point over and against the switch yeah. composition that's gonna be rough that's yeah they're gonna have to they know they're gonna have to try and push in here now but it's gonna be a tough thing to do especially now that Symmetra has her turret set up. She's going to be looking to increase that photon beam power tremendously. Likely going to be charging it off that Reinhardt shield as much as they can. Peeking for a little bit more damage right now. Doesn't get a whole lot in, but they're already 20% captured. And oh, look at this flank now from Unique. They almost get a pick there um, off of that excellent teleporter. Tele uh, two more turrets going in there. Could have probably found a pick. Um, just very slow very kind of stalled out here for Villanova. They can't really get in against the Symmetra. They're worried about getting in. Finally, the bubble comes out the wall. A little bit misplaced. Just walls off the May themselves. Keeps them out of the fight. Call us to come through. Look, that's what the gambit was. Yeah, and now that Unique is fully charged, they're going to start burning through these players. 
of Villanova. My press is already out of the fight, and that's unfortunate because they had the Shatter online and ready to go. Villanova just gonna back off and wait for their main tank to try again. Yeah, waiting again. Kind of been fight so far, 60% now accrued, and we're gonna have to see maybe some more tempo come out, especially with that lamp. Uh, Happy Sparrow dies late. That's not good. That's just... You can't push in without this Baptiste here. It's one of those characters, like, maybe if the Tracer was dead, you can push in. Not without the Bap. Yeah, that's very true, especially considering they had the Amplification Matrix online and ready to go, and I think that's gonna be a crucial engagement tool for this Villanova side. Now that they're regrouped, they're gonna start pushing in through the main choke, but they've got a tough, uh job ahead of them. We're gonna see a little bit of a flank. Tracer throws out the pulse bomb, not gonna find anything. The Shatter does connect, it's gonna find two. Nuke Lava's there though with the sound barrier and everybody else just cleans up Villanova. Now yep. there's 95% on the board and I don't think there's gonna be another touch. Yep, that's, uh, they kind of stalled out on the side there for so long trying to build up Coalescence. Wasn't taking really enough poke to charge it up quite so fast. They engage with the Coalescence there. It doesn't find anything. And now they're just stuck on that point, stalled out. They have two fights that entire time. And the alt advantage was just heavily in uh, Mary, William and Mary's favor. It certainly was. They're, uh, you know, I think you're absolutely right. And that Villanova just took too long out of that first engagement. Uh, both, you know, since there was a little bit of a misplay getting to point, and once they were actually there, they weren't able to really get enough damage in to start building up their ults. And it looked to me like that was what their game plan was. They uh, absolutely wasted too much time on it, but it's a new sub map. It's a new opportunity for them. And we're going to see Brawl again from both sides. Yeah. We're going to be seeing it in clean TP out of uh, spawn there for William and Mary, kind of as on these control maps, especially has just become standard for most teams to be TPing out at least their supports out of spawn. Slowest, mm. mo mostly the slowest characters uh, are going to be like a Zen typically, even if you're running dive, even if you're not keeping the sim. That's what happens. Tesla Maywall comes out from Pega there, or rather from Unique. They're able to take Nate the Cat out of a fight. Mifris follows very quickly. Max for the win going exactly for that right now. Can they get the Zarya out of the fight as well? That's going to be a big boom because they had charge built up. Yep, that charge is gone. You're going to see Tyler B here with that 70% to Coalescence. That's their engaged troll. Now it's going to be on Mifris. They just hard shield that Coalescence when they're walking up. Probably don't expect them half shattered. That was a very, very quick fight, but a lot of stuff that Max for the win did get down there. Um, so it really does come down to once they pop that coalescence, do they protect it with that Rhine Shield? Because the shadow is going to be an instant response uh, if they do engage with that. Yeah, that is an excellent point. Tyler B16 definitely needs to build that up quickly. You're going to have an opportunity to. I like this link from Nuke Lama as well, getting a little bit of chip damage. Maywell comes out and isolates Mifres again. They taken out of a fight and this is almost over before it starts some nice uh, time regression there typically a lot of time a mistake that people make is if they're defending a point they will just sit there and let the people walk into them for free uh no you need to be aggressive a lot of times on defense in certain competitions especially on rush you really need to be aggressive into the enemy team because that's how you're going to win with using your cooldowns before they can use theirs and william and mary's knows that uh quite well that they do Tyler B16 has uh, built up, or Tyler Big, I suppose, has built up this uh, ultimate now, but a fire strike through an amp matrix is going to take Nate the Cat out of the fight. Here comes the Coalescence. They're looking to reverse their fortunes, but they're down one player. The mortality field has to be committed by Happy Sparrow as well. Blizzard coming out now from Unique, going to catch several people who were right in front of that window. They're going to get frozen. They're going to have to kite away from it, and William and Mary comes out with another fight win. Yep, another fight win, and that was second to last there. The penultimate fight has gone their favor, and they have some massive ultimates on the table. Torb alt, very good at zoning people off. That beat is just going to be used to keep the team alive when the engage does come through, even through that Graviton Surge. Here it comes, that Graviton Surge. Self-destruct now committed. The beat is there to keep every member who was caught in that graphic on Surge alive. Now he's got the multi-core being committed as well. It's going to make it very difficult for anybody to stay on point from Villanova. Nate the Cat, the first casualty on Villanova side. And with overtime ticking over, that's going to be it. William and Mary takes the dub on Nepal. Yep, there it is. Uh, kind of um, what the expectations were, at least for William and Mary, a very, very strong team. Villanova, mm -hmm. they had some game plans in certain situations, but uh, 
weren't able to get the coalescence enough fast enough on first point to surprise them basically with those kind of strategies very similar to a nano monkey you want to get that off before enemy support alts or enemy um, tank alts can be built up um that just wasn't the case when they did that yeah excellent excellent you know excellent opportunities taken advantage of by william and mary really i mean we saw that shatter as well uh hitting the entire back line and the Ooh. reinhardt as well so excellent play coming out from there and it's going to be up to um it's going to be up to villanova now to try and regroup come back a little bit stronger in this next map yep i'm gonna be trying I think you really need that, Lucio, not only for the speed boost, right? The the ability to engage and disengage very quickly, but also for the sound barrier. Sound barrier is such a crucial ult. It can negate uh, you know, uh, so much damage from the opposing team. And without that, I mean, you do have the immortality field, I guess, when you're running the BAP um, Moira, but it's not as strong. You need that speed boost utility in this brawl composition. Yep. Yep. Basically what you want to do is as they're speeding into you, um, and they, if they end up using their cooldowns first, you want to be able to speed back and kite, not having to use that many mm -hmm. cooldowns so that you can re-engage with your cooldowns. Typically a may wall is that go uh, or disengage button. Um, we didn't really see that much of that from Villanova, but, uh, for Mary and William and Mary, I definitely expect that to be something in their, in their wheelhouse. Um, they seem like yeah. a very disciplined team, so should be no no uh, should be piece of cake for them. Yeah, you know that's a very good that's a very good um, term to use. I think discipline with William and Mary they're they're playing it by the books and it's working out for them incredibly well. We're gonna see Villanova now on the defensive side first for Kings Row, so they're gonna have the opportunity to kind of set the goalpost uh, that they're gonna need to reach on their attack. And like you said, I anticipate we're going to see a lot of Brawl coming out once again. Maybe we're not going to see a Symmetra in the works this time. Potentially a Hanzo, potentially a Cassidy. But I feel certain that we're going to see a May come out from at least one of these teams. It's just so powerful, especially on first point. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't discount completely a Symmetra on Kings Row. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen this some teams, and this has been like in legit competition. Like I'm talking grand finals of leagues and stuff. They pull out... Symmetra Bastion TP on top of Mandata's head. Right. Send it. Uh, don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> don't think that's gonna be the case uh, here for William and Mary, but uh, we do see kind of a half of that combination with the Bastion here on the defense for Villanova, hoping to just out overwhelm the enemy rush with that shield advantage. And if William and Mary don't go hard enough poke comp, uh, like they could just, if they slotted in a Hanzo out of that Widow, I'd say they can definitely deal with this Bastion, but yeah, um, yeah. should be interesting. I imagine Unique probably going to swap out. Yeah. Wow, it's like they heard no. you. <laughs> no. Villanova swapping, or rather Unique swapping over now to that Hanzo. Going to be a lot more shield break pressure coming in. You see William and Mary now uh, staging at the main choke. They're going to wrap around the Mondata statue. Nate the Cat throwing in a little bit of chip damage now, but not finding anybody at the moment. And William and Mary going to take the very long rotation around. I think they've decided to push onto this high ground and... Big pick coming in very early. Happy Sparrow does get res, but in the meantime, can this draw composition collapse quick enough? Happy Sparrow going down very low. Nate the Cat is out of the fight. Immortality field has to be used, but now that it's gone, people are dying again. Happy Sparrow out of the fight as well. Vega very low as well, and Unique coming alive on this Hanzo, doing tremendous work right here. It's just a tank and mercy left now for Villanova. William and Mary's got a couple away with this first point. Yeah, and very common rotation against um bastion or other double shield setups um we've i, I mean i've seen this because nuke Lama has it um, i've been told or i'm pretty sure has had tier three igling experience or calling experience um so very common for them they know that completely i mean it's been so long for those kind of rotations to be in the game so definitely nothing right. new for them yeah that's a very good point 
Nothing new indeed. Very old hat for them. We've got both of the teams now positioning up on bookstore. Looking to just wait, uh, William and Mary just waiting for this card to get a little bit closer before they decide to push in and start expending some of the utility. Nate the Cat set up right now, but Dragon Strike goes through Immortality Field committed. One pick for either side. Shatter now thrown out by Mifras. It's not going to catch anybody this time around. Rival now looking to try and break some of these shields if they can prevent the res. Shatter comes in, but it's going to be Unique who takes Tyler Big out of the fight. And without that res and those extra heals, Villanova just forced to back up. They commit the amplification matrix too, but the hammer from Max for the win is just too much to deal with. Yep, William and Mary know exactly how to play against this Bastion, especially when they're setting up the Bastion so close to the front line. Uh, yeah. You wait, 3, 2, 1, speed forward, hard DM the Bastion the entire time. You're going to walk in. They even had Dragon Strike there to force him out. Uh, but if, even if you don't have that Fire Strike, you just hard DM on top of them and try to get as much damage down as possible while that Bastion is uh, essentially neutralized. They're not going to get a touch in here. So 5 minutes, 30 seconds going into third point. But uh, having swap off that Bastion, very good, to, uh, very good choice. I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, once the Bastion has uh, not been able to set up on point, it's very, very hard to find use out of it. A laundry gonna commit the amplification matrix once again, and already William and Mary is making this meat out of Villanova right now. So much damage going through it, they're just unable to handle it. Tyler Big does get the res out onto Nate the Cat, but they're taken out of the fight almost as quickly. And now, William and Mary has pushed up halfway or more through this third point. They're going to try and hold here as strong and as long as they can. Max has the Shatter ready to go for when this team decides to push out. But they have to push out soon. Shatter comes in, takes Nate the Cat out of the fight, charge in as well, and Immortality Field committed. There's somebody on point now trying to keep it alive for Villanova. Max is eventually taken out of the fight, but there's nobody left from Villanova. And that's going to be four and a half minutes on the clock for William and Mary. Yep, very, very, very strong time on King's Row here. Um, yeah, they're just really good at that uh, at that brawl, at that rush style. I mean, those two terms have kind of been used interchangeably by a lot of people in the community um, yeah. <laughs> recently. I mean, Ryan Diva, I guess, could be called brawl. There, this, this is like the the conversation of like, oh, is Monkey Diva rush? Is that is that right. like Monkey Diva more It's like there's other terms for it, but when yeah. I say it interchangeably, but um, very good at that composition nonetheless. And I, I definitely think this map definitely serves those strengths and should be um should be able to highlight what they're able to do especially with such a coordinated team rush is definitely a style that that helps with that it certainly is now we're gonna see uh william and mary on the defense they're gonna try and hold back this villanova squad they've got the tools to do it uh, as well going again for a very classic rush composition and with a Rationite on the May as well, it's going to make pushing through that initial choke very difficult for Villanova. We might anticipate seeing them rotate around to actually right where Rationite is looking right now, to that window. Yeah, definitely could be could be something they want to do. They obviously are looking for a more high ground or poke-centric composition with that uh, Nate the Cat locking in the Ash over something like uh, Cassidy or... Oh, never mind. Okay. Uh, still more pokey. Um, a little less... It's, like it's not hit scan obviously so it's it's not right. like oh i'm gonna hold down this sight line instead i'm gonna hold down this angle i'm gonna do some trigonometry on you and i'm just gonna <laughs> hold down the angle as much as possible that's right there's gonna be some calculated grenades coming through from nate the cat a lot of shield pressure gonna be put into max uh, for the win rival's gonna have to do a decent job i think of eating some of that chip damage coming into that shield otherwise it's gonna get burst down very quickly villanova does decide to take the high ground rotation taking a page out of william and mary's book uh, waiting for their cooldowns to come back before they make a decisive push in. And I like seeing Taylor Big now on the Lucio. Rotation comes through, but it's going to go down to the ground. And now Mifris is caught out a little bit. They go down to about half health, but Max is going to be trapped. Immortality Field has to be committed to keep them up. But speaking of uh, keeping them up, Happy Sparrow unable to do that for themselves. They're going to be taken out of the fight. And now without those big heals, the Villanova squad is caught in a very tough position. Do they wait for Happy Sparrow to get back? Or do they continue this push and try and make something of it? You have to help Happy Sparrow get across right now. Because what's going to happen is, he's going to get spawn camped by Lucio. That's what's going to happen, apparently. New Palma <laughs> taking it into their hands. Wow. Going to be shutting them down. Going to be staying there, too. Uh, this is so worth it, I think, for them to have Lucio for Bap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Villanova decides to push in after Bap goes down, and they are quickly dissected and dismantled. 
by Nuke Llama and the rest of the William and Mary squad. Yeah, and right now you kind of see a, a big kind of difference in the kind of tiers of play. Um, where a lot of the time you can see these higher level teams, they just have more actions per minute, or even just more like like thoughts, mm. per, like they're just doing more faster. Um, right now, whereas it takes a while for Villanova to get through certain angles, and it, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of how the game goes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We have an application matrix now committed by William and Mary, and the damage is just too much for Villanova to handle. This push is done in short order. Yeah, there it is. Oh, maybe trying to get a pick there for Tyler. Not gonna find it. Gonna be taken. I'm pretty sure Nuclam has like the most final blows on this team, which is not something you normally see from Lucio. Yeah, um, that's true. One with no environmental kills. <laughs> Uh, Nuke Llama maybe learned how to play Lucio from Reddit, it appears, uh, but you know what? They're doing a very effective job of it. They're, uh, you know, they're, uh, doing a incredible, actually, on Lucio. Now we have the sound barrier committed by Tyler Big. This is gonna be a big push coming in from Nevermind Villanova. All six of them laid down flat by Max for the win. Huge shatter. That's gonna be another fight win now for William and Mary. Yep, and... Uh, that is mostly everything used there for um, for Villanova. They're gonna have that May Blizzard. They're gonna have the Shatter finally coming up. Grav still a ways away, but definitely attainable. But you're walking into such strong ultimates, fight winning ultimates, the Lucio beat, the May Blizzard. That's just stuff you can't compete with, especially when you swap off that Lucio. How do you get out of this May Blizzard? Yeah, exactly. Mayball gonna be committed early on. It's gonna catch out a couple of members of Villanova. Here comes that Blizzard now. Immortality field committed, but it's gonna be taken out in short order. Both tanks fall now for Villanova after the Graviton Surge is committed. Tyler Big going down low, and now with just 30 seconds left to go, they have to reset quick if they're gonna have any hope of taking first point. Yep, and right now we're gonna be seeing how they wanna come in here. Swapping off for the Hog, not considered the biggest stall hero, especially on the attack here, but just trying something, anything is Blue Falcon. Trying to get it done. Here comes the bomb. They have land for that. They have shields for that instead. Still, oh, Happy Sparrow no. does go down. That is a huge win for William and Mary right there. Sound Barrier has to be committed by them. And with half of the members of Villanova left and just a second left on the clock, it's all but over. William and Mary gonna come away with another map when King's Row is done and in the books. Yep. Uh, there it is. That's now 2 0 up for them. Uh, William and Mary. And it's just kind of, uh, we should be going to Hanamura, I believe, um, next. Yes, and I believe so. Another rush map. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Another rush brawl map. So don't expect much to change there for, for William and Mary so far. They're probably just going to sim TP to point, sim TP to second point as well. They might swap over sim to second point, but we'll see how that goes. But uh, just very well executed, very well executed rush composition there. Um, just very standard. I mean, that was kind of like... 2020 first beginning of overwatch league that was the composition <laughs> that was run that's how long it's been that this composition has been like a staple of rush when you think of uh, a brawl in that case but you think of that it's like oh may cast ryan mm -hmm. diva uh bath lucio and that's how it's been for so long i mean i think it was an honor back then but i mean that was yeah billions of years ago so who knows yeah you know and i i like what you said it was very standard coming out from william and mary it was again i i just like to say by the books right yeah. It was classic, it was clinical, and it was smooth and clean. And Villanova just unable to really get anything going against that. They have this brawl dance down to perfection. Now, before we get to Hanamura, though, we're going to take a short break, give the players a moment to get some water, reset their mentals, things like that. Be sure to come back in just a few minutes for what could be the exciting conclusion of this matchup between William and Mary and Villanova. See you all back here in just a couple minutes.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the action. We've got William and Mary up 2-0 over Villanova. My name's Warren Jungle God Hammond. Again, to my left is Worst Casts. We've got an exciting uh possibly finish for this uh for this matchup. Esports or more esports for their for their college is always a good one. It certainly is, and you know I've uh, gotten to gotten the pleasure to watch this Villanova squad over the course of the fall, and I can say that they improved every single game that I've watched them on, and I think this one's no exception. They are going up against a very tough opponent in William and Mary, but there's been a lot of good things from this squad, and one of the things that I think I like the most is the fact that they're willing to adapt. They're willing to try things out if something isn't working. A lot of squads, even ones that are maybe a little higher tier, they have uh, problems, you know, making the swaps when they need to early on. But that hasn't been the case for Villanova. We do have a disconnect, so um, we'll hopefully have them back in the lobby very, very soon. But that just gives us another couple minutes to talk about Hanamura. Yeah, some of these teams can have problems, such as internet problems. So yeah. uh, we have to uh, be accommodating of that. Technical issues are always going to happen within... Yeah. I mean, just in any any facet of technology, man. I mean, <laughs> things do not work sometimes. And you're like, why does this not work? Mm, yeah, exactly. Work. Just does exactly. not work. His left? Okay, well. Um, you know? Oh Tell my me gosh. I'm wrong with one of the players. I've Some, some insider information. Um, bad yeah. stuff. Bad stuff may have just happened to that, that, that poor, poor yeah. lad's uh, laptop. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's not a serious issue. It's, um, apparently, say they said their laptop broke. I'm not sure if that's entirely hmm. um, accurate. Accurate, yeah. But uh, fortunately, uh, one of one of the teammates of uh, Villanova is a roommate of them. They're gonna go back and check on them, see if um, see well, if they're back. gonna be back. Oh, they are back. Excellent. So it appears that their laptop was not in fact broken. Hyperbole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A little little bit of hyperbole there, but that's okay. It is loud. Um, you know, I think we're gonna see the Symmetra come out here again on this um on this on this attack. Uh in fact it's already it's already being hovered over by Tega in spawn. Of course there's a chance that that's gonna change. But such a powerful strategy on Hanamura. This choke is an absolute nightmare to try and get through um on the attacking side, especially if you're coming up against such a powerful force like William and Mary. Yeah, and this, again, this is uh, very standard stuff. Um, not so much the Bastion, but the Rush Comp uh, um, for both sides and the make Cassidy on defense as opposed to something like a Symmetra on offense because the Symmetra's value really does come from bridging gaps with that teleport or something that isn't as useful on defense where you don't really need to bridge gaps that, that, uh, that often. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Interesting rotation coming out from Villanova. I anticipate they're going to try and teleport somewhere in the um, somewhere in the back. Uh, looks like they're just trying to clear the choke a little bit, get in a little chip damage, maybe break down that shield of Maxes a little bit. Here comes the TP. They're going to try and take out um, William and Mary, but Unique is there. The defense matrix from Wyvil allowed them to eat up all that damage, and now we have a first point hold coming in successfully from William and Mary. Yep, on the attack so far uh, has not proved fruitful. That's a minute now gone, almost a minute, eight seconds. Now gone here for Villanova, and they're gonna have to maybe change some stuff up. Bastion swapping off is the first thing. Max for the win, hitting the spawn doors. Not something you always see, but yeah. We'll need some help getting out of here, I think. Yeah, he certainly will, yeah. The fence matrix coming in now from Rival, but that shield's gonna be low now when Villanova gets to choke. And that's gonna be a boon for them. They're gonna have an opportunity to push in but they need to take that opportunity quickly. They're kind of stalled at choke at the moment, and at this point, Max's shield has got to be back to full. 
gonna see the May here hiding wow. in the corner. It's dangerous, and Max for the win is now gone. They have ult yeah. to counter if they want to commit. Yeah, that they do. We see a quick backup coming in from William and Mary. Amplification Matrix now committed. The shield goes down for my friends, and there's a nice body shot from Unique to clear them out. Amp Matrix gonna help a lot with that. And while the amp, while the coalescence was committed as well, Villanova's still going to have the Ant Matrix for their next push and shatter. Yep, that they do trying to go in this main. The corner is going to be kind of spoiling it though. That Ryan's going to walk forward, instantly get walled. There's a little bit of a sorry thing. Like I said, <laughs> instantly gets walled. Sorry you got walled. That's really rough. Oh, but there comes the hook, and now another pick gone. Uh, two picks actually coming the way of Villanova. Yeah, this is now their opportunity to start pushing, especially since they have the spawn advantage. Rival gonna try and sh uh, slow them down a little bit. Max has the shatter online, looking for an opportunity, takes it, lays down five members of Villanova. Two of them are gone immediately, comes in. Um, Max was able to take out one of the supports as well. New Flama in with the sound barrier as well, but Villanova's gonna be able to rotate around and start to put pressure on point. Self-Destruct comes in. That's going to deal a lot of damage into that shield of Myfrust. Blue Falcon now, though, trying to keep everybody off point with that whole hug and doing an excellent job of it. That is until Nuke Lama comes in and hits them from the side. Once again, proving to be a dangerous and dastardly Lucio. I mean, but those picks were very good. Um, punishing the aggression there from William and Mary. Got a little mm -hmm. bit too big for their britches and... I mean, that was just a really nice uh, job by Blue Falcon to punish it with those hooks. Uh, could have almost had it, had it been a little bit cleaner on the entry. Uh, lost a little bit too many people after that shatter, but definitely a strong showing from them. Yeah, it certainly was. Maywall comes out, isolates my breath very, very quickly. They're frantically spinning their shield around to try and stay alive. He's They're able high. to due to an excellent immortality for, from Happy Sparrow, but it's only going to last for so long. 30 seconds left to go. Villanova has to reset fast. Yep, that's that 30 seconds now. That's the time. It's warning you guys. You got to get to that point. You got to cap it. Uh, it's haunting, haunting noises. You got to hear sometimes. It's like, <laughs> man, I just really don't have the resources for this. And not they don't. They only have the coalescence here. Luckily, there's not many ultimates available for the side of William and Mary, just the high noon. But charging the point, not conducive to living very long. No, it's not. And I don't think anybody from Villanova is going to be able to touch. Especially with that dead eye, William and Mary holds on first point, but Villanova did get quite a bit of percentage captured, so they have a win condition on the board. Yep, win condition is acquired. Not going to be a draw, no matter what. No draw going to come out here. It's going to be a win or a loss on either column. Uh, but I expect uh, a Symmetra, Symmetra comp to come out for the side of William and Mary. Very shortly, as soon as that 20 seconds does wind down and you see those heroes finally assemble on your screen, I'm expecting Symmetra and I'm expecting the TP uh, to point, not uh, how Villanova did to that top left window. Yeah, I think that's uh, probably going to be the primary plan of William and Mary as well. Although there are lots of different options that you can take for a TP from, uh, from the attacker's side. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the one that Villanova used. I think uh, teleporting instead to the high ground, kind of to the left of point is really good. Or even the high ground over to the right on that little ledge above point can be uh, beneficial. But we didn't see that coming through from Villanova. And if spawn is anything to be believed for William and Mary, we might not see that from them either. Uh, the Sombra is a very interesting pick here. Yep, interesting pick indeed. Uh, seems like they're gonna try and hack Ryan, maybe. Um, walk behind, hack the Ryan, hope they don't get shot by the... the anyone, actually. Yeah. Just get shot by anyone. <laughs> or maybe just a scouting thing. There it is, speed forward, speed the Sombra forward, TP back to spawn, swap, there it is. Yep. Something that was kind of, um, not revolutionized, but created, I believe, back in Season 2 of uh, Overwatch League, I think, was when it was, like, first gained mainstream popularity, because people were actually, uh, needing to scout if they need to stay on their, their non goats comp. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Tega gets an early pick onto Unique, and Villanova's uh, first hold is starting out strong right now. Crash and I trying to find a head with an icicle, looking to give someone a brain freeze there, uh, but not finding too much at the moment. William and Mary content to just wait for Unique to get back into the fight and build up some ult charge right here at, um, at Choke. 
unique has to rejoin. And now the push comes in. Immortality Field has to be committed by Happy Sparrow already. Max is going to take Mifris out of the fight. Gets frozen. Immortality Field committed by a laundry as well. But Hicks coming in. Hand over fist now for William and Mary. Just a couple of members left. And this could be it. This could be all over for your Villanova. William and Mary going to get one point online. They just have to take out Tega. And with that, William and Mary going to be a quick 3 0 over Villanova. Yep, there it is. Very quick 3 0 there for William and Mary. But here's the, here's the, here's the bright side for Villanova. Um, they said, I believe, in the, in the pre-match lobby, they were like, hey, guys, let us get a tick, because then we can say we did better than our basketball team last night. And <laughs> that, was, that was organic. That was not even like, oh, they let them get a tick. That was really organic, them getting that yeah. tick. Uh, almost two ticks right there. So that's something they can actually say with, with pride if they want. Like, we did do yes. that against a very strong team. That was yeah. not, that was just them punishing aggression. They're very good for them. Yeah, it was. It was really, really well done. And... You know what? I love seeing this kind of sportsmanship in chat uh, in, in the um, in the score screen. My for us gets 10 upvotes. Um, that means William and Mary giving a lot of encouragement to Villanova as well. And, you know, like I said before, lots, I think, to be impressed with by Villanova. Like you said, they were able to get to that first point, get a couple of ticks or get at least one tick, almost a second off of William and Mary. And that is not an easy task. William and Mary, a very strong team, moves up to seven and two now and still holding on strong into the upper echelons of the egf leaderboard yeah now they're competing against teams like Col university of colorado connecticut yep. university of tennessee st john's university like all these kinds of uh and maybe being joined on later uh today or even uh currently as other matches are going on yeah um we'll be joined up by people like wichita or uh Arlington who's six and one right now like these kind of teams that are like sitting at that six win range like they're joining a, the upper echelon of the, of the groups like you said well that's gonna do it uh for the moment um but don't go anywhere because we're gonna take a quick break and bring somebody in I believe for an interview let me just check with production make sure yeah we are gonna have an interview coming up uh they are in the waiting room so we will be back in just a couple of minutes to talk with one of the members of William & Mary. Don't go anywhere. Hello, everybody. We are back, and we have Ratchet Knight in the lobby with us, uh, here to answer a few questions about this fantastic win that William & Mary came away with today. First off, Ratchet Knight, uh, congratulations to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. So, the first thing I want to know is, how long have you been with this William & Mary team? Is uh, this your first season with them, or are you an old hat at uh, EGF Overwatch at this point? Um... Well, I was on the team uh, a year ago, uh, mm -hmm. not this most recent fall semester, but the fall semester before, and mm -hmm. um, that was the first year we were in EGF, so I'm, I'm an all-timer, though I had a break uh, in the spring semester, I'm back again, uh, starting in this, you know, fall and spring semester, so uh, I've been around for, for a couple a couple seasons now. 
Excellent. Yeah, I, I kind of want to get a gist of like, you guys now seven and two on the standings. How do you guys feel about your overall power ranking within like the college circuit right now, or at least in the EGF circuit? Um, yeah, of course. By the standings, uh, we're in the top half, obviously. I don't know exactly where we stand in the standings. We're very proud of our uh, standings thus far in the season, and hopefully we're looking to push it higher in the second split. Excellent. Well, you were off to a roaring start already. Uh, seven and three, or seven and two, rather, now after week nine here. So, um, what uh, what was your main goal coming into this game against Villanova? Did you have anything outside of just wanting to win that you wanted to try and accomplish here? Um, for this game specifically. I don't think we really came in with, with anything too specific other than, you know, to play our best and to play how we've practiced mm -hmm. and, you know, bring that into the game setting for the first time this semester. Excellent. Other than that, um, I don't think so. No, we didn't particularly have any, any uh, you know, overarching goals or thoughts. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I'm going to ask uh, one more quick question um, before I turn it over to Worst Cast for, uh, for a final question from him. Uh, do you have anything exciting, uh, any exciting developments coming up for William & Mary in your eSports program? Uh, anything happening this spring or in the coming fall? Um, I'm not quite sure. I know uh, us as a team, we uh, just held uh, a really fun event within the team. We held a cooking competition for ourselves. Uh, and oh, we're nice. hoping to make some, uh, some type of content on that. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> um, I'm unaware of any you know official news regarding uh, the program and such at William & Mary. All right, well, well I, I lied. I'm not going to turn it over to Worst Cast quite mm. yet. I want to know, I want to know uh, about a little bit more about this cooking competition. What did you cook and who won? Uh, yes, well, I played the tank role in the competition, <laughs> which means I picked out the ingredients and the recipe for my team to cook. And we So it was a team thing. It was a team yes, competition. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, cool. This is even more exciting. Yeah, and we cooked some... Um, some sirloin with oh, an shit. onion sauce. Damn, that sounds really good. <laughs> it was pretty good, I have to say. All right, Boris, any uh, final questions for uh, Ratchet Knight? Yeah, it's kind of about how the team uh, like kind of functions. You have two, um, you have two like big players. I think from what I've been told, uh, Alondri, who is kind of like a team captain, and uh, Nuke Lama, who is your main support and also has some experience IGLing previously. So how have those two people kind of like helped this team improve? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Nuklama fills the role of, you know, like each strategist, you could say, I guess, you know, he does all the old tracking and, you know, he's really the one we turn to when we're thinking about what strat we're going to use on a map, what comps we're going to play, you know, and what kind of things um, we need to be doing at what time. While Alondra, the team captain, fills, you know, more of an emotional role on the team, bringing us all together, making sure we're all close and all, you know, functioning well as a team itself. So, yeah, they've done, you know, a ton for the team. They're like a very solid glue that holds it together and makes sure that we're not, you know, doing super bad and we're, we're playing a good game and we're, we're a good team, essentially. Sounds like you've got a fantastic culture built there in the William & Mary Overwatch eSports program. Well, thank you so much for coming in to join us for this interview, Ratchetonite, and good luck to you in the rest of your season. Yeah, thank you very much. You are welcome. Well, that's going to do it for this part of the broadcast, but Worst and I are going to be back very shortly with another match coming up soon. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. We're going to throw it to a break, but we will be back soon.